In this second part of the life sim video, we'll create emergency planning zones, alternatives, and simulations for the model. To import an emergency planning zone, simply right click on the emergency planning zone dialog. Name the zones clearly. This is going to be our max I double warning, so we put DW EPZ. We're going to import our polygon shape file which is our maximum high. Select the name field. Notice I've got three different zones. I've got the fail zone that will only be impacted after a breach occurs. I've got the non-fail zone which will be impacted by the spillway flow and I've got an impool zone. I'm, I'm going to import emergency planning zones for the max high double warning, the interim high double warning, and all the t top of active storage and lower events which don't have any spillway flow prior to the breach. Notice there's a checkbox for simulate traffic. If you do simulate traffic, this will allow you to only simulate traffic for certain polygons within your EPZ and not the entire study area. Since we won't be simulating any traffic for this dam breach, we're going to uncheck this. For each zone, we're going to select the unknown parameters. Now for the end pool zone, we'll select the preparedness unknown perception likely to impact because we're going to assume that people that live right next to a reservoir would know as it rises that they'd be likely to be impacted. This has a little bit higher maximum mobilization than the preparedness unknown perception unknown curve. Now we click OK to import our emergency planning zone and we can right click on it to show it in the map window. Next, we will import all the remaining EPZs for the interim I and the top of active storage in the lower. Now that we have the emergency planning zones imported for the, the three that we need, we're going to skip down to the alternatives and create alternatives. We right click to create a new alternative We'll name the scenarios, the alternatives, similar to the hydraulic events we're running, but we're going to specify a warning scenario, which would either be minimal warning or ample warning. We'll start with the minimal warnings. So we'll uncheck simulate traffic, and we'll give it a name, max I fail min warn. We'll select a hydraulic event, it's our maximum high pool fail our structure inventory, our EPZ, and then we're going to move down and set our warning time. So for a minimal warning scenario, we we'll use negative 2 and 0 with a uniform distribution. And for our hazard communication delay, we'll use 0.1 hours to 0.5 hours. For the non-fail zone, we're going to set the warning quite a bit earlier so that we make sure that the people that get flooded by this spillway flow have time to reach somewhere around the maximum mobilization because we're going to assume that they're going to have quite a bit of warning for a spillway flow event. So in our CTS sheet, we could see how much time we need to back it out before. We also want to make sure that the non-breach warning is on a 24-hour increment so that the population at risk doesn't interpolate between day and night, which could potentially give us negative incremental populations. So we're going to use negative 120 
to make sure we get that warning out before the start of the simulation. And we won't need a hazard communication day since we're using such an early warning. We're going to set our end pool to the same, negative 120. Now we click OK. That creates our alternative. To create a second alternative, the easiest way to do it is to copy it. We can change the name to IH fail menworn. Click OK. And we can edit this one to use the intermediate high and the intermediate high EPZ. And we'll set the end pool again at negative 120. Now you need to make sure you don't always just use negative 120. Sometimes you might have to go farther out to make sure you're out in front of the simulation. For the fail zone, we'll set it at negative 2 and 0. And then we'll click OK. We'll set up the rest of the zones in a similar way, or the rest of the alternatives by right clicking, copying them, changing the name and the parameters. The only difference between the minimal warn and the ample warning is going to be that the warning time will be negative 6 to negative 2 instead of the negative 2 to 0. Now that I have all of the alternatives created, including the minimal warning alternatives, ample warning alternatives, and then non-fail alternatives, we can take a look and see what those look like. So as I said, the only difference is in the fail zone, the ample warning has negative 6 and negative 2. On the non-fail runs, the fail zone gets an early warning as well, even though there really shouldn't be anyone in the fail zone on the non-fail run. To create a simulation, right-click on the simulations, hit create new simulation. Keep the name short and simple. You may want to create a test simulation as well so that you can run some of your fails and some of your no fails with just a few iterations to make sure the results look correct and that your non-fail, non-damaging runs, which for me is top of active storage and lower, do not actually have damages. So we're going to select 2 a.m., 2 p.m. We'll run a thousand iterations. Now we have to select summary polygons to aggregate the results to. Typically this is where we use the downstream mileage reaches polygons, although you can import as many polygon shapefiles as you want. We'll import our downstream reaches, we'll call it reaches, and we'll select our reach name. Now, I'm also going to import a shapefile of census populated places so that we can also see results aggregated to city areas. check the alternatives we want to run. You can run all of them at once or you can run subsets in multiple simulations. Also notice that you can click on the options up here in the computation engine options where you can change the number of computer processors that will run iterations. So if you run out of memory this is a good way that you can drop it down. It'll take longer but it might not run out of memory. To 
run, save our simulation, we click OK. Also notice that down here at the bottom, your simulation might not show up as it, right after you click OK. Just click the arrow next to it, and it should show up. To run the simulation, right click on the sim. and click Run Simulation. A progress menu will come up. Sometimes you get errors such as what I got here. So this says that one structure is not within the emergency planning zone and it is number 28,687. find the offending structure, we can go to our structure inventory, open the attribute table, and find structure number 28687. should be the actual first number not the second one so we're going to zoom to that structure we'll turn our emergency planning zones on and we can see that it is outside of the emergency planning zone so to fix the error we'll right click on our structure inventory click edit we'll select this structure as it already was. Right click on it and hit delete selected features. Now we're going to save the edits, stop editing, close our attribute table. Now we'll attempt to run our simulation again. As you can see now we did not get the error we're going to process the hydraulic data for each structure and then it will begin running simulations. We'll have another video that goes over how to look at the results.